Hello everyone. Am I audible and visible? Let me know. Fine. I think I'm audible. Fine. I think I'm okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm myself Dr. Deepthi Kare, MD PhD Physiology and I'm your educator for physiology. In my channel, I have started uploading live videos for First year MBBS, Physiotherapy, Nursing and Homeopathy students and uh, if you regularly watch my videos, I will definitely complete the whole syllabus of Physiology in a given period of time. Okay, so I request you all to subscribe my channel, hit the bell icon and regularly watch the videos. You can easily complete the whole syllabus. Okay, uh, so today in today's class, we will discuss about disorders of neuromuscular junction. Okay, disorders of neuromuscular junction fine uh, before that I would like to have one announcement that if you wish to get uh, soft copies of all my topics that is available on the application Vesalius this application you can download from Play Store so many students are not knowing how to download just open the Play Store and download this application Vesalius and subscribe it for getting all my uh, topics notes okay as well as if you wish to get my notes physiology notes this is a book okay and that is available on Flipkart as well as on the uh, Amazon also so you can order also order there hello Kishan good evening beta so now let us come to our today's topic that is various drugs affecting neuromuscular junctions okay so first uh, so today's topic is certain disorders plus drugs so whatever things they affect your neuromuscular junction that today we are going to discuss this topic is important if you are interested more in surgical branches like orthopedic where you require to reduce the fracture and all as well as for physiotherapist also this lecture is very important because they come across uh, so many patients in which this neuromuscular blockers are required fine so now let us start with the neuromuscular blockers the name itself suggests neuromuscular transmission is blocked by the drug okay the transmission at the neuromuscular junction can be disturbed by certain drugs either they are drugs or they are chemicals or some of the toxins or sometimes trauma also may result in blockage of this neuromuscular transmission fine what happens when this transmission is affected as we have discussed what is the function of uh, neuromuscular junction that is to transmit the impulse okay so here what happens because the impulse transmission is affected so there is no generation of end plate potential yesterday we discussed if you have not watched my videos of video of yesterday neuromuscular junction you just watch it and it is a continuation of that end plate potential and action potential that is affected okay so what happens there is no generation of action potential here action potential will not pass from nerve to muscle and as action potential will not pass, what happens? Muscle gets paralyzed because muscle requires nerve impulse for the contraction. Fine. So there is no muscle contraction. And if there is paralysis of respiratory muscles, that is dangerous. Because respiratory muscles are important for the life. Okay. So this is one of the clinical significance. Or the clinical use of this blockers. In which conditions we require clear your uh, neuromuscular blockers to be used number one that is in as i told you during surgery surgical operation suppose somebody has fracture hand and there is spasm so to reduce it we have to give muscle relaxer neuromuscular blockers as well as another is in case of psychiatric patient sometimes electroconvulsive therapy ect was given and at that time also we require to give neuromuscular blocker to prevent the or block the transmission of impulse fine this is a cl clinical use now which are this neuromuscular blockers available in the clinical practice basically they are divided in two groups number one is depolarizing blocker and second are non depolarizing blockers okay so depolarizing blocker one important one that is succinylcholine 
non depolarizing blockers are all the other but important one if you wish to remember if you have a short note you just have to write down about only this four that is sufficient for you people fine one that is curare or d tubo curare here it is written fine second is bangaro toxin we will discuss i will dis discuss mechanism of action of each and every neuromuscular blocker in detail fine third is succinyl choline that is depolarizing blocker and carbamyl choline fine and botulinum toxin first of all try to remember all these names okay curare bangaro toxin succinyl choline and carbamyl choline and botulinum toxin okay we will discuss one by one starting with curare okay curare or the name is sorry or the name is d tubo curare you can see here ha huh. you can see in the diagram also that is easy to remember c for c curare competitive inhibitor competitive inhibitor okay so it compete with acetylcholine how because the structure of curare is similar sorry it is similar you can see in this diagram the structure is similar to the acetylcholine you can see here so it binds on the receptor site of the acetylcholine you can see here this way hmm? so when it binds with the receptors of acetylcholine now your acetylcholine cannot bind you can see here because the place of the acetylcholine is taken by curare okay so acetylcholine and curare they compete for the receptor these are nicotinic receptors present on the motor and plate okay so now acetylcholine cannot bind okay so what happens that there is blockage of the neuromuscular transmission okay and acetylcholine which is released that cannot be able to produce end plate potential and action potential fine so this is the mechanism of action easy to remember curare competitive inhibitor first and its action fine now applied aspect as i told you whenever you are writing your question always try to write down clinical aspect because you are going to be clinician if you are uh, doing mbbs if you are doing physiotherapy if you are doing nursing you have to be in contact with patient so always in your answer you write down clinical aspect little bit it, uh, you can score good marks okay so here here curare it is used as arrowhead poison in some south american uh, community they use this curare on the head of the arrow here curare is placed here fine at the time of hunting so what happens when they are doing hunting animal they are just uh, hunting animal with the arrow and this curare it works to block the neuromuscular transmission okay so because uh, this neuromuscular blocker is there the animal dies because of asphyxia okay respiratory muscles they are paralyzed because neuromuscular transmission is blocked and that results in the death of the animal okay another another applied aspect is your curare suppose if we wish to get the antagonist means if we have require to decrease the effect of curare that is by anticholine esterase now what are this anticholine esterase neostigmines and tetraethyl pyrophosphate okay they are choline esterase inhibitor which are they will discuss uh, acetylcholine as yesterday we have discussed acetylcholine is degraded into choline and acetate okay by the enzyme choline as and as choline ester ester choline esterase okay and here this neostigmine inhibit this enzyme okay so this ester choline remains for a long period of time its removal is inhibited and it can act on the receptor so if we wish to get antagonism to the effect of curare we can give this anti choline esterase fine now so this is first neuromuscular blocker as we have discussed number 1 that is curare mechanism of action you can easily remember c for c curare competitive inhibitor fine easily you can remember next one is bangaro toxin okay this is bangaro toxin this one now what is the mechanism of action it is commonly found in the venom of dead snake so snake venom okay snake venom 
Now, what is the mechanism of uh, action? You can see here in this diagram, it is shown nicely in the diagram. You can see here, this is bungarotoxin. It binds with the receptors. So, it blocks the neuromuscular transmission by binding with the receptor. Okay. So, bungarotoxin binding prevents acetylcholine from binding to the nicotinic receptor on the postsynaptic membrane. So, acetylcholine cannot bind okay so it blocks this neuromuscular transmission because it binds with the it is also some kind of competitive inhibition okay fine yeah. then next is botulinum toxin commonly this is used clinical aspect first of all i would like to tell you that is botox injection i think you must have heard about botox injections they are the injections given by the uh, cosmetician hmm? So, how, how, what is the use of this botulinum toxin? This botulinum toxin that is derived from the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum. Sorry. This is the bacteria botulinum. That from which we are getting botulinum toxin. Okay, now what is the mechanism of action? Neuromuscular transmission is blocked by this botulinum toxin how because it decreases release of acetylcholine here okay previous two they are the competitive inhibitor here the release is inhibited prevent the release of acetylcholine okay and it causes paralytic disease the name of the disease is botulism okay and it is one of the most potent natural poison if you are giving 2 to 3 micrograms that results in death of the individual intravenously. Okay. Now, botulinum toxin, it has different varieties. These toxins are of different types B, D, F and G. Now, how do they act? One is they inactivate the vesicle membrane protein. You can see here on the vesicle membrane, we have, as we have discussed yesterday, on the vesicle membrane, there is synaptobrevin and syntaxin. Synaptobrevin is present on this vesicle membrane and syntaxin on the nerve membrane. Okay. So, how do they work? These toxins B, D, F and G, they inactivate this protein synaptobrevin. This protein synaptobrevin help in the fusion of your vesicle to the membrane. Okay. So, this fusion will not be there. No fusion and no release of acetylcholine. Okay. So, you can see. I'll just repeat this is important aspect. You can see botulinum toxin has different types B, C, D, F and G. Okay. From this B, D, F and G as I have written. Okay. What is the mechanism of action? It inactivates vesicular membrane protein synaptobrevin. Here this is the protein present on the. I will show you just in the diagram. So it becomes easy for you. You can see here. This is synaptobrevin, you can see here in this diagram. So, this is inhibited by botulinum toxin B, D, F and G. Fine. Okay. So, by when this protein is inhibited, your vesicle cannot bind and acetylcholine is not released. Number one. Second thing, uh, remaining one is botulinum toxin C. Now, what is the action of botulinum toxin C? It breaks down your this syntaxin. Syntaxin that is the protein that is bound to the membrane of the nerve here. Here. This is neuromuscular junction. This is the membrane of nerve. So when this syntaxin is not there, again there is no release of acetylcholine. Fine. So this, uh, this is the mechanism of action of botulinum toxin. Okay. Now clinical use. As I told you, one of the clinical uses it is used for therapeutic and cosmetic purposes to decrease skin wrinkles. Okay, it blocks the transmission across the neuromuscular junction and it prevents the release of acetylcholine. Okay, so this is the one of the clinical use that is therapeutic and cosmetic use. Sometimes it is also used for the treatment of achalasia cardia. If the injection is given, very important thing here as I told you it is highly toxic so it should be given in diluted doses. So when it is given in the diluted doses, it produces muscle relaxation in achalasia cardia. What happens at the lower end of the... Uh, esophagus there is a contraction okay so there is mega esophagus you can see this lower esophageal sphincter cannot relax here okay so this 
relaxation is made by this botulinum toxin okay so it can be used in the patients of achalasia cardia okay also it is used in the patients of strab strabismus and blepharospasm blepharospasm here what happens blinking or other eyelid movements like twitching that is uh, affected that is not controlled as well as facial muscles when they are uh, they are also contracted that is also reduced and that helps in decreasing the age related wrinkles so it is used as a cosmetic purpose okay um another thing is it is also as i told you when it is given in very small amount it is lethal bioterroric bio uh just a minute it is lethal bioterrorism agent here this one okay because when that is there in the aerosol or in the contaminated food it can lead to death of the individual fine so these are the clinical uses of botulinum toxin okay so we have discussed three neuromuscular blockers number one is curare competitive inhibitor second that is a uh, bangaro toxin that binds with the receptors and third is botulinum toxin okay that prevents the release of acetylcholine fine fourth one that is succinylcholine which is also known as succamethonium and carbamylcholine okay now this is also acting like acetylcholine but what is the difference between curare and this succinylcholine these are known as depolarization blocker okay so what is depolarization blocker they act like you can see here they act like a, uh, acetylcholine okay bind with the receptor but what they cause is they cause depolarization of the membrane this is resting membrane potential okay now the membrane potential is depolarized and the membrane potential remains in the state of depolarization now it will not go back so till it will not go down next stimulus cannot stimulate the tissue okay so it acts like depolarization of post synaptic it acts by depolarization of post synaptic membrane and it cause local energy exhaustion and there is there is no generation of new action potential in the resting muscle during relaxation and another important thing here is it is not destroyed by choline esterase acetylcholine is destroyed by acetylcholine esterase this is not been destroyed okay so here it keeps the muscle in a depolarized state and block the neuromuscular transmission this is used for the reduction of fracture another important thing here is commonly this is used as fracture reduction because the action of succinylcholine is short duration okay so if you are giving it for the reduction of fracture that that remains for only 5 to 10 minutes so after 5 to 10 minutes the action will be gone so till that time you can reduce the fracture okay so this is one of the important use of succinylcholine uh, that is used for a short period of time and non specific choline esterase or uh you can see that is uh, because it is degraded why its action is short duration because the succinylcholine that is degraded by pseudo choline esterase it is not degraded by choline esterase but degraded by pseudo choline esterase okay so we do not require any kind of antidote it can be degraded itself within 5 to 10 minutes okay not by choline esterase that degrades acetylcholine you can see here this is the diagram again showing the same thing you can see here succinylcholine it binds with the receptor and it causes depolarization and block in the state of depolarization fine so this is about neuromuscular blockers we have discussed four types of blockers two groups depolarizing and non depolarizing depolarizing is succinylcholine non depolarizing we have discussed curare bangaro toxin and botulinum toxin now next topic that is neuromuscular stimulants these are the drugs that stimulate the action of neuromuscular transmission okay they have acetylcholine like action as well as they inhibit the enzyme that degrades the acetylcholine that is acetylcholine esterase fine we will discuss those drugs number one is the drug having so this neuromuscular stimulants are two types number one their action is same as acetylcholine so they work like acetylcholine second they you can say they inactivate choline esterase what is the role of choline esterase 
choline ester is degraded acetyl choline so acetyl choline cannot be degraded so it will work for a long period of time fine so now we discuss first group of drug they are drugs having action like acetyl choline and they are methacholine carbacol and nicotine okay they are having same action like acetyl choline you can see here they bind with the receptors of acetyl choline and they have similar action and they are not destroyed or destroyed slowly by the enzyme acetyl choline esterase okay so this drugs they cause repeated stimulation and continuous action on the muscle sometimes the side effect is it may produce muscle spasm also fine so this is first group of drugs second group that the drugs they inactivate the enzyme acetyl choline esterase these are the drugs important one commonly used in the patients of myasthenia gravis okay we will discuss fine so these are the drugs neostigmine try to remember names physostigmine and diisopropyl fluorophosphate dfp okay i repeat neostigmine physostigmine and diisopropyl fluorophosphate these are the three drugs okay neostigmine physostigmine i repeat and diisopropyl uh diisopropyl fluorophosphate uh, okay now what is the action as i told you normally what happens this acetyl choline is degraded by acetyl choline esterase now you can see here esterase it converts acetyl choline into choline plus acetate we discussed yesterday but this neostigmine inhibit this one so what happens there is no degradation of acetyl choline into a choline and acetate okay so you can say that acetyl choline remains for a long period of time and it can perform its action then uh, another thing is di uh, diisopropyl fluorophosphate is a lethal poison because it causes continuous stimulation of the uh, the respiratory muscle and that results in laryngeal spasm long action so that also is side effect of this uh, drug which inactivate the acetyl choline esterase now we discuss one disorder neuromuscular disorder one of the very important disorder so many times it is asked it is important for uh, mbb student also for physiotherapy also they have this kind of patients okay myasthenia gravis clinically this is very important what is this myasthenia gravis this is autoimmune disease here you can say auto antibodies are produced auto antibodies means antibodies against our own tissue they are produced fine okay so here auto antibodies are produced against this acetyl choline gated channel acetyl choline receptors okay so you can say that when this antibodies are there this antibodies they bind with this receptor so now your acetyl choline molecules they can not bind with this receptor so myoneural junction is unable or neuromuscular junction cannot be able to transmit the nerve signals fine this is the pathology now what is this etiology this we have already discussed some of the things one that is auto antibodies are produced against you can see these are the antibodies these are acetyl choline receptors post synaptic folds they are sometimes they get flattened up you can see here this is the fold and this is the fold which is smaller one okay cause is unknown that is autoimmune disease okay uh, but therefore uh, with, you can see that huh, there are three major action of this antibodies how this antibodies work number one they compete with the acetyl choline because the structure is similar and bind with the receptor number one second sometimes what they cause is they cause endocytosis of the receptors receptors they enter inside so now no receptors no action of acetyl choline and third they also damage this post synaptic membrane so this way these antibodies they affect the muscle membrane fine now what are the clinical features here clinical features are you can see here because uh, commonest clinical feature this is ptosis you can see this is ptosis ptosis means drooping of upper eyelid okay upper eyelid sorry upper eyelid drops down okay so upper eyelid drops down hmm? dropping of eyelid fine okay now another clinical features are i'll just show you 
this are here so because neuromuscular transmission is affected then the person is having rapid fatigue early fatigue with marked generalized weakness of the muscle okay weakness increases during prolonged activity so the person is normal in the morning but as the day advances and as the person performs exercise or activity the person feels weakness fine then the person is uh, mainly extraocular muscles and the lead muscles are involved so the person is having ptosis as i told you drooping of eyelid and double vision that is known as diplopia fine and proximal limb muscles they are commonly affected okay and in severe cases muscles of eye muscles of respiratory muscle respirations they are affected and in severe cases when respiratory muscles are affected the person will die because of the uh, this uh, respiratory paralysis okay so these are the symptoms of myasthenia gravis now treatment what is the mode of treatment number 1 is one can give acetylcholine esterase inhibitor as i told you acetylcholine is degraded by acetylcholine esterase into choline plus acetate now if we are removing this so the acetylcholine remains for a long period of time to perform its action so the symptoms are relieved and this is done by the drug neostigmine this one okay fine second treatment is thymus may be removed because thymus produces antibody okay third treatment plasma pheresis plasma pheresis means plasma of the person which contains antibody that is removed and new plasma is given this is plasma pheresis so antibody titer decreases and sometimes immunosuppressive drugs are given like glucocorticoids they decrease the immunity and azathioprine these are the drugs they can be given thioprine okay they are this. so these are the modes of treatment i repeat repeat acetylcholine esterase inhibitor thymus is removed plasma pheresis and immunosuppressant drugs are given fine next disease that is lambert eaton syndrome this is also autoimmune disease but here very just a different symptoms are same but the difference is pathology here antibodies are produced against this calcium channels in the presynaptic membrane fine presynaptic membrane we have calcium channels we have discussed yesterday in the neuromuscular junction this calcium channels they open calcium enters then vesicle it fuses and vesicle releases acetylcholine fine but this calcium ions antibodies they bind with the calcium ions so calcium ions cannot enter inside and there is no release of acetylcholine fine so you can see here whenever action potential comes here but calcium ions are not released and there is no release of acetylcholine this end plate potential and action potential cannot be generated so the symptoms are same but the treatment which we are giving for the myasthenia gravis that will not work for the lambert eaton syndrome because pathology is different fine so this is all about huh. the same thing repeated stimulation of nerve on emg electromyogram incremental response due to increased calcium huh. another important thing is suppose if we are repeatedly stimulating sometimes response may be found because some of the calcium ions may enter and some of the action potential will found but this is not like a normal one fine so this is all about today's topic today we have discussed i just have summary today we have discussed neuromuscular blockers okay neuromuscular stimulant myasthenia gravis and lambert eaton syndrome so these are very important neuromuscular disorders now there is a time for question if you wish to attend just i am discussing the question because of lack of time i will discuss them fast fine if you can give answer in the chat box that is fine otherwise it's okay i will discuss first question mechanism of action of curare hello hello beta jalpesh hello good evening beta so what are the mechanism of action of curare curare that is compete with the acetylcholine for the nicotinic receptors on the motor end plate it prevents propagation of action potential it enhances the action of acetylcholine esterase and enhances the action of catecholamines this is easy question 
as I told you, easy to remember, C for C, QRA is competitive inhibitor, okay? It compete with the acetylcholine. Fine, fine question, good, correct answer. Second question, if you are attending the class properly, you can be able to answer correctly, fine. Which of the following is a depolarizing blocker? As I told you, only one is a depolarizing blocker. Neuromuscular blockers are of two types depolarizing and non-depolarizing. Non-depolarizing are curare, okay, then botulinum toxin and bangaro toxin. So what is left? That is your succinylcholine and carbamylcholine. They are depolarization blocker. As I told you, they keep the membrane potential in the deep or this is resting membrane potential this is depolarization and here after depolarization there is no repolarization so no next potential will come fine this is the action next which of the following is not true for botulinum toxin derived from clostridium botulinum bacteria Blocks the transmission across the neuromuscular junction by preventing release of acetylcholine, compete with the acetylcholine and cause paralytic disease known as botulinum. We have discussed this competition is always by curare. So this is not the action of botulinum toxin. Botulinum toxin, how it works? It prevents the release of acetylcholine either botulinum toxin b d e f they bind with the synaptobrevin and c binds with syntaxin and prevent the release fine so this is the answer okay next is a 50 year male if you know the answer please give the answer in the chat box uh, and uh, if it is wrong also it is fine if it is right that is very good Okay, now 50 year old male diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. What is the pathophysiology of the disease? Hello, Ali. GI physiology. Okay, L let me give me some time. Within 15 days, I will simultaneously start digestive system along with this topic. Okay, fine, Ali. Are you happy now? Ali is asking for uh, what I gave you answer Ali. I will start extra classes after one week. If you give me time of one week of digestive tract. Okay, fine. Just after one week. I am, I am quite busy in this week. After that, I will definitely start. Okay, fine. So, you can see here. What is the pathology? Antibodies against acetylcholine receptor at the postsynaptic membrane, against calcium channels, against voltage gated sodium channel. Okay, against sodium channel. Okay, beta, welcome beta. And against voltage gated potassium channel. Chalo, give me the answer. What happens in myasthenia gravis? Antibody against postsynaptic receptor, against calcium channel, sodium channel. Potassium channels. Hmm? If you know the answer, please give me the answer. Huh? It is against this postsynaptic membrane. These are not sodium channels. These are ligand gated, ligand gated channels. Okay. Sodium channels but ligand gated. Okay. So this is the answer. Fine. Next, 50, 35 year old woman present with complaint of bilateral drooping of eyelid, generalized fatigue, weakness. On investigating, found antibodies of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Drug is administered that uh, increases force of contraction of muscle but causes bradycardia. What is the drug? Mm -hmm. Decrease calcium concentration, decrease breakdown of acetylcholine, increase alpha motor neuron discharge, increase release of acetylcholine. We have discussed. 
neostigmin given neostigmin inhibit acetylcholine esterase so it decreases the breakdown of acetylcholine fine this is the answer now next is in lambert eaton syndrome this is easy answer please give me the answer in the chat box huh lambert eaton syndrome antibodies are produced against which channel sodium potassium phosphate or chloride easy one Hmm. Can anyone give me answer? All of you are just listener. Please give me the answer. I told you, if you are wrong, then it is fine. Hmm. We have discussed in Lambert-Eaton syndrome, antibodies are produced against which channel? Calcium channels. It is easy question. Hmm. Fine. So now tomorrow onwards I will not go for MCQs, okay? Because nobody is answering me. So from tomorrow onwards in class no MCQs are there. Fine. Okay. Give me a reply in chat box or. Okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> okay. Fine. So you, if you are not getting the video, you can watch it again. Fine. But. About other students also. Fine. No issues. In myasthenia gravis, antibodies are produced against muscarinic receptors and tolerance of acquired immunity system to one's own tissue is reduced. And both of above, none of above. Here the answer is this one, autoantibody. Not the muscarinic receptor. Which receptors are there in the neuromuscular junction? They are nicotinic receptor. Easy to remember neuromuscular N for N nicotinic muscle muscarinic. Okay, fine. So this is the answer. Next, myasthenia gravis is characterized by sustained contraction of muscle. Most commonly affected muscles are muscles of limb. Antibodies produced against calcium channel and antibodies produced against nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So this is the answer. Okay, fine. Nine. Patient complain of muscle weakness and on administration of neostigmine. This weakness disappears. Why? Because what is the action of nicotine? Uh, sorry, neostigmine. It interferes with the action of acetylcholine esterase. Okay, neostigmine inhibits acetylcholine esterase. Fine. So, acetylcholine cannot be converted into choline plus acetate. Okay, this enzyme is blocked by neostigmine. Fine. Last question, all are the causes of muscle weakness except myasthenia gravis, Lambert-Eaton syndrome, curare because it is competitive inhibitor and neostigmine. Neostigmine is, will not cause weakness, it is neuromuscular stimulant. So all this, they produce weakness and the correct answer is D, fine. So this is about your answers, okay. Thank you so much. I again repeat that if you wish to get soft copies of all my no notes, they are available. You just have to download this application Vesalius from the Play Store. Okay. And subscribe it. You will get a soft copy of all my topics and hard copy for that. You can purchase the book Physiology Notes from uh, the Flipkart as well as uh, it is also available on the Amazon. Okay, Avni. Hello, Avni. Mm. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Veta. Thanks for watching. Thank you all. If you like my video, you can like it. You can share with all your friends. And subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon. Bell icon Q hit karna hai. Ki class chalu ho gi, to aapko reminder aa jayega ki madam ki class start ho gai hai. To please, itna karna hai. Ek to like karo, subscribe karo, share karo aur bell icon hit karo. Okay, thik hai. To roz apne ko ek ghanta, aadha ghanta padna hai bas just. 
नाइन थर्टी टू टेन टेन ओ क्लॉक एंड टेन मिनट्स ओके और आपका पूरा फिजोलॉजी कंप्लीट हो जाएगा प्लीज ओके फाइन थैंक यू सो मच